Welcome, everybody, to the Arizona News Show. You should see the behind-the-scenes stuff we go through <laughs> to show up. <laughs> Light That's doesn't right. work, camera doesn't work, the mic doesn't work. <laughs> I'm just going to record it next time. That's all I can say about that. It would actually be funny bloopers. <laughs> you know, I was looking back on, on one of the shows I did uh, where I actually put some of our funny things all together in one clip. It was quite entertaining. It was uh, not informational. But uh, it, there had so, to be a lot of pat in there. There was uh, there was a lot of pat in there. So, uh -huh. But uh, <laughs> but we had we had fun. So we're going to go over some of the numbers today. And before we get started, I want everybody to know that when this episode airs on Thursday night, possibly even tonight, which is Wednesday, we will be at one million <laughs> views. <laughs> Very nice. So we're gonna we're gonna hit that. I think probably Thursday by lunch. I'm not. That sure. is a big deal, and good job, and congratulations. Well, thanks. It's kind of tiny by YouTube standards, but uh, I like it. It's pretty good. So we're we're thinking of a show next week. I don't want to do just a, um, a a YouTube one where you go, "Hey, we hit a million views and stuff." So we're we're kicking around some ideas to bring on some guests to kind of. Um, you know, liven things up a little bit. So it should be fun. So stay tuned. Next week ought to be a good one. But for now, we have, it's interesting. Look how listings under contract are continuing to go up. And this could be just the normal spring market. Um, they're finally coming out of the woodwork, but they're not going down. And and Cromford said, having forecasted yesterday at the listings con over contract would exceed 10,000 this week, the market obliged by delivering a very robust increase of 338 today. This means we have a monthly increase of 14%, almost unheard of this time of year. Wow. And I'm seeing it in my seven day moving average, that little yellow line, see how that spiked up? Mm -hmm. So it it's up over 3,400 and we were rocking around 29 to 3,100. But the listings are not giving us any relief. They're going down. And this is my favorite little chart here showing you that sales are up, listings are down. That's going to put upward price pressure on listings. And as we go through, look at some more market insights here. Um, here's the top markets at risk of home price decline brought out by CoreLogic. And look how many are in Utah. One, two, three. One in Florida and then Boise. This is a confidence score. That isn't that isn't uh doesn't mean they're gonna go down by fifty to seventy-five percent, but they're saying, you know, for the things that they summarize, they're gonna go down. Now we are here's the top ten metro changes. So we're up like zero point one. I think this is February numbers. Chicago's down, Houston's down, Miami's down. Boston is down. So um, it's an interesting number. Here's year over year changes. But um, it's good to see CoreLogic is showing what's happened because they're not very good at predicting what's about to happen. Uh, I did find. Maybe they need to stick in the past and stop messing around with the future because they don't seem to call it right. Yeah. Yeah. But now here's another example of how the headline doesn't match the content. Housing starts plunge 72. 17.2% raising recession fears. I'm not sure if that raises recession fears, but then when you get down here, further down, it says new home sales in February increased from this month, from the month before, rising 1.1% last month to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 640,000. Nevertheless, sales were 19% lower than in February of 2022. So I think that's on a national basis is what we're seeing. But here we're up, I think it was 6% new construction. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they're saying um, that sales of new homes increased slightly from January to February, a sign that buyers might be re-entering the market amid more lower mortgage rates. After having a headline here saying we're going to, we went down 17.2 and we're going to plunge into a recession. So um hey rick can yes. i throw something in about the new builds because i noticed this when i was out last weekend i was showing new builds and when i had been out previously in january 
like you could wheel and deal still a little bit. I remember showing a Centex and, you know, they had the incentives, they had their price reductions they had done. And then I was still able to negotiate with the wrap and get another $4,000 off the price. And they had great incentives. And so this weekend I went out and saw the same wraps again and there's, they're not budget. They're like, we, we can't negotiate anymore. And their incentives have also dropped. And so they were still offering 3% toward financing. They had their lender incentives, but they weren't offering anything else. So I was actually oh. a little surprised to see that. But that changed, I was, changed quickly. I was out this weekend and um, the uh, cash buyers that I have, because they don't have they don't need seller concession or not seller concessions, but um, builder closing costs or whatever so much. So they were offering 50,000 off though at a couple of the builders that I went to. So Meritage and um, hmm, I don't recall the other one, Richmond American, I think, but they were offering them 50,000 off. So that's wow. a huge, that's a huge incentive there. So it kind of yeah. just depends on where you're at in which community I think. All depends on their inventory levels, I guess, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Pat, we're getting squeezed this week, huh? Or you're getting squeezed. Yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a real laughing matter, Rick. <laughs> oh. right. So, Pat, I understand the rates are bad. Yeah, it's real, la it's real funny, Rick. Real funny. <laughs> yeah, people are trying to buy homes and interest rates are going up and you're laughing in the in the face of that. That's real funny. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, we're, um, I'm just kidding. Um, no, we saw the five and a half coupon. It was down nine bips today. But I mean, um, you know, the U.S. Treasury was at 360. We've been seeing this right in here, this little, this these are rates. We saw it blip up. It's made a move. From uh, on April seventh on that Friday last week Friday, we've seen a, you know the ten year go from three thirty to about three sixty. Right there, we're seeing some resistance right here. But once again, you can see these little short term moves. You know where we had here. You know it's we're seeing these two to three week, four week moves in a in a long term scheme of things. Because um, if you if I pull it back a little further, you can see how this is rates. We had that that climb up. From this is brutal from August uh, last year to about October, end of October. It's you know basically just August, September, October. It was just nothing but a staircase climb upward, right? Now we're just kind of stuck in this range where we're seeing these little two, three, two to four week blips, um, and we're kind of just stuck here. I mean, the thing it is, there is a federal government governor uh, James Bullard. And once again, he opened up his mouth yesterday and said that um, he wants to see a 75 basis, 75 basis point hike from here. And he said what? that he doesn't he doesn't 75. Yeah. I mean, not not in one move, but basically oh. not, you know, maybe a quarter, quarter and quarter or quarter and 50 basis points. But he doesn't believe there's going to be a recession. He says he, he says the banking sector is fine. And that the labor markets are very, very, very strong. And, um, you know, once again, Barry ripped them apart, you know, saying that uh, he's been an outlier and that uh, he's just been, they, these guys have been wrong. And what uh, flies in the face of what Janet Yellen said this week, didn't it? Because she said the banking crisis has actually tightened credit and they're going to help us do the job that the Fed might not need to do. Yeah. Yeah, there, I, there's no, there's no, uh, they're not running parallel arguments at all. So, you know, the lending standards are tightening up on the commercial side. You know, I don't know if you saw that one interview with Elon Musk. Uh, yes. You know, um, on, on a news station, I'm just going to say, keep it non-political. But, um, uh, you know, he was saying that. Uh, he was on Fox. Yeah, I'm Fox. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, Rick know, isn't going to keep it that way. Yeah, he was. You know, the commercial. He's saying the commercial side is definitely going to be hurting down the road. You know, it's certainly it's hurting now. He goes, you know, 30 40 percent, you know, um, vacancy rates. And there's, I've been seeing other articles, other experts come out and saying the commercial, 
you know, commercial still is going to got a long way to go. And it's, it's looking, it's not looking dire for commercial. And um, so I don't know. It's just, uh, I mean, I think we're seeing right now, short term wise, we've seen a little blip the last week. I think we're going to see, a little, you know, May 10th is the day that um, Barry's been looking for, but uh, we're seeing these little short term spikes, which doesn't help matters. So well, that's why I pulled this up, Pat. Tenant demand for big box warehouses surges in Phoenix Metro, especially out by the 303. They're, they're, yeah. This article's talking about we're one of the fastest growing industrial market in North America. Yeah. And, uh, so it's now that's that's a different market than commercial real estate that has offices. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, nobody wants to go back in. Nobody wants to go in the office right now. And then, you know, but then it spills into people say, well, the commercial market's going to um, crack. You know, residential is going to crack. I'm sure there's going to be some some spillover. But people, like Barry said, people still need a place to live. They might not, you know, they're, they're working from their house. They're not working from commercial. So they're buying the home still. Yeah, I think the chatter that I read was that it'll be disruptive to the uh, to the banking system. And therefore, yeah. tightening will will spread. So, um, how will that affect new builds? I don't know. But yeah, I mean, do, Jackie Ruby, when you're out, I mean, do people bring up commercial real estate at all, or is it just kind of is it flying over everybody's head? Does anybody not even care? Because I don't know what Ruby the Ruby's been dealing with a little bit of that. You want to talk about it? Yeah, I I have a client that's looking for. Um, commercial for specific um type of clients but um there seems to be plenty of inventory out there so i don't know if that's kind of going along with what you're talking about pat but um there's you know i don't know i don't really do a lot of commercials so it's not really my league well i was reading an article on tempe town lake and carvana is um they're going to not renew their lease. It's that huge building down there. Obviously, they're going belly up. But there's Tempe Town Lake. Those offices down there are so popular that they don't anticipate a problem bringing people in. Well, guess who else has a big building right next door to them? Open Door. Oh. State Farm. And State Farm had a huge – my son was working for State Farm COVID. They sent them all home. They didn't bring them all back. Um, he's no longer with them. I was asking him last week, what are you hearing? And he says, oh, I haven't been talking to anybody over there. I couldn't tell you. But uh, so, but this article was saying that their occupancy rate um, along Tempe Town Lake is like five times higher than anywhere in the valley. Oh, I imagine. It's beautiful like, there. As long as you like hearing airplanes fly overhead. <laughs> so. Yeah. Cause that that's one noisy spot if you've ever been there. It is, but it's it's a prime location. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, been, it's nothing but mud now though, because since the Salt River's gone. Hey, I had a title agency send this to me, and it actually is from Altos Research. You guys are well aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking of subscribing to that. It's Cromford Market data on a national scale, so you can pick. And I'm going to put this link in the description below. And you can, this is like the public portal that you can look at here. And you can search by city. So I just pulled up Gilbert here. And you can look at the blue part right here says buyer's market, right? Let me make this a little bit bigger here. So we're right on the edge between buyers and sellers. Uh, but it's very interesting. They give you a lot of data here. The real-time market profile, the list price, median price of new listings per square foot, average days on market. So it's. It's a neat little thing, and you can check out um, all kinds of stats on here. And this hey, is from great, great American Title. Yes. They'll actually give you down to the zip code, too. Yeah. I've been thinking about subscribing as well because it's so detailed, and it'd be really nice because sometimes you'll see certain cities, even right now, where you can have a house a mile apart. The one is sitting there, and, and the other one, it's multiple offers. So it's nice yeah. to kind of be able to hone in on that zip code too. Yeah, this is so for those of you, especially that are out of state that are looking, I, I will put the link in below, monkey around with it and tell me what you think. I think it's because uh, now Cromford has a Cromford public profile that you can access that you can pay for. But I don't think the average consumer, you know, somebody looking for a house wants to go out and 
pay a service to do a bunch of digging. So, and <laughs> Redfin's pretty good, but it's not anywhere near as detailed as as Altos. That guy's that guy's pretty spot on. So, Pat, we had a subscriber yesterday when I was on the show. Uh, I did my live stream in the morning. Um, Jason, who's up in uh, Seattle area, his prediction is that by the end of the summer we will be ten percent off our highs from this year, and that rates will be higher. And guess what I did? You bet him. I bet him a dollar. So. <laughs> I saw that. So, <laughs> I think you, that was a good dollar to bet, Rick. What say you, Pat? I think. I mean, ten uh, percent. There's just uh, bottom line is there's just there's no there's no supply. We're in a supply demand battle back and forth, and then if rates, I mean, um, once again, I'm sticking with Barry. Barry's been more right than wrong, and he's saying that. Uh, the Fed just does not understand what's going on. They're looking at old data. So I'm sticking with Barry with what he says. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see uh, a catalyst for rates going up. I know that a lot of the bond market reacted um, yesterday and today because of European inflation. Uh, European inflation came up higher than anticipated. So a little bit of jitters there. But, man, until we fix this situation, this line and in inventory going down instead of up, I just don't see prices declining, not at all. And when you look at the simple little seven-day moving average that I put together, um, you take the number of new listings, number of new contracts, 95% of new listings are going under contract, statistically. The only time we saw a decline in that was when that number got below 60. Yep. <laughs> We're at 95. So um, now that can change easily in a month. So, but you need something to do it if we had a bank hiccup. But the uh, the Fed and uh, Treasury are, are singing, a, they're kind of all singing from the same hymn book saying that banks are fine. Don't worry. We'll see. <laughs> I, don't I don't know if I buy it. <laughs> Elon Musk did make the quote on that uh, uh, non disclosed news show and said, uh, You can't spend trillions of dollars and not have inflation mm -mm. and he goes so um there's no way to wind down from it it's here and yeah. he said and if you could spend trillions of dollars and not have inflation then why not just give that money to everybody and not worry about it mm -hmm. he said oh that's right venezuela tried that yeah so it was a interesting interview it was very interesting he's he's a pretty smart guy yeah, he knows he's uh, got his – I don't know how guys like that can manage that many different businesses. But uh, so next week, we're going to celebrate a million views. I want to bring some guests on. I want to bring uh, a variety of guests on from different states and different uh, industries and say, well, what do you think? Where do you think we're headed as we look at having a million views? Uh, let's kind of stick our neck out a little bit and, and do a little bit of predicting. I don't like to go out much more than a quarter. Um, cause I'm usually wrong. And so, but I'm, I'm willing to bring other people on and ask them to stick their neck out. So <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, I won't, I won't laugh at rates going up anymore, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pat. I take right. it personal. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I get it. So, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you everybody. Thanks for joining us and we will see you next week. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.